Hi, my name is Michelle and I have idiopathic hypersomnia, also known as IH. IH is a neurological disorder characterized by excessive daytime sleepiness, often with associated cognitive dysfunction, despite getting a full night's sleep or longer. I became suddenly sick in March 2010. I was 32 years old and only four short years into my career as an internal medicine doctor after completing my residency at Emory. I still felt like private practice itself was a holiday. I loved my patients and my work, and I had every weekend off and four to six vacation weeks every year. I had been healthy and happy in every way. Although when the illness hit, I didn't have any symptoms other than severe fatigue, which at that time I didn't realize was actually sleepiness. I assumed I must have a virus and I would just need to wait seven to 10 days for improvement. After 10 days passed, I began to worry and started the far from straightforward journey to my diagnosis with idiopathic hypersomnia, seeing over 15 specialists along the way. Initially, I was diagnosed with undifferentiated connective tissue disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, and more. None of my doctors ever thought to send me to a sleep specialist, nor clarified the difference between fatigue and sleepiness. I didn't accept the chronic fatigue diagnosis and acted as my own internist to systematically rule out all the conditions that would need to be ruled out to actually feel confident in a diagnosis of chronic fatigue. Since IH is also currently a diagnosis of exclusion, I was very glad indeed that I had ruled out essentially everything else by the time of my sleep study in September 2011. Thankfully, I had chosen an astute sleep neurologist who immediately sent me for a daytime sleep study known as an MSLT or multiple sleep latency test along with the usual nighttime sleep study or polysomnogram. When I got my IH diagnosis, I was at first delighted to have a diagnosis and medications to try. When I failed treatment after treatment, now more than 30, and found nothing on Google search about IH other than journal articles, my delight turned to devastation. My sleepiness and brain fog continued to worsen until it became clearly only a matter of time until I would make a significant error at work. Despite all my efforts, at double and even triple checking everything. In August 2012, I took three months medical leave, hoping that if I could just sleep for those three months, then I would feel better. Instead, I felt even worse and realized I would have to give up my cherished career. Thank goodness I had full disability insurance coverage, an excellent disability lawyer, and doctors willing to fight for me. Most people with IH are not so lucky. But IH didn't stop there. It has robbed me of most of my hobbies and social life. I even had to make the heartbreaking decision not to have children because I'm too sick to care for them. IH makes me emotionally labile, irritable, and adds enormous stress to my relationship with my significant other. I constantly say my brain is broken because that's exactly what IH has done to me. I had to watch in horror as my once agile and awesome brain was destroyed. It is a testament both to an excellent therapist and my immense willpower that I learned to cope with IH well enough to want to remain alive. I do not say that lightly. This story is common among people with IH. I want you all now to think about the sleepiest you've ever felt. Perhaps it was after a particularly grueling international travel schedule, when you had severe jet lag but had to go back to work immediately in your own time zone. Or perhaps it was when you were parenting an infant and hadn't slept more than a few hours a night for weeks. Now imagine that feeling of intense sleepiness, which is so overwhelming that all you can think about is lying down to sleep immediately, anywhere, even on the hard floor. That feeling of overwhelming sleepiness will never again go away. Even if you sleep for as long as your body allows, you'll never again awake refreshed and able to think clearly. That's what I've lived every day for many years now. At best, I feel awake like a normal person for a few hours per year. It's so rare that those times are clearly emblazoned in my memory. So what's a typical day for me? Every day, in spite of getting a full night's sleep, I require two daytime sleep sessions, each 1.5 hours long and separated by about two to four hours. I cannot skip these. If I try, the feeling of sleepiness becomes so strong that I literally feel like I can't go on living. So my entire world revolves around this sleep need. 
Imagine how you could do anything outside of your home if you needed to find a safe place to sleep twice a day each day. How would you travel? How would you even run errands or join a friend for a matinee? Because of my sleep schedule and severe brain fog, I only have a few hours each day in which to live my life. Years ago, my therapist made the excellent suggestion that I set a baseline minimum that I was sure I could accomplish every single day and which would therefore constitute success. As I thought it through, I realized that since there was no way I could predict my daily functionality, there was no definite baseline minimum. However, I did need to eat at least three times a day, and I'd learned the hard way that if I didn't make easy meal plans during one of my less sleepy time periods, my world would come crashing down when I got hungry, as I was so sleepy that just getting out of bed and putting a frozen pizza in the oven required a Herculean force of will. If we were out of frozen pizza or microwave meals, then I would often lie prostrate in bed until my significant other came home from work to feed me. This was a terrible situation all around. So I set my baseline minimum for a successful day at feeding myself. That's it. No showering, no getting dressed, no washing the dishes, no paying the bills, no calling a friend. I can't predictably do any of these things. What keeps me from being productive during the hours that I'm awake is not only severe sleepiness, but brain fog. Brain fog is another term for cognitive dysfunction, which may be experienced as memory problems, difficulty concentrating or thinking clearly, and inability to focus. I suffer from brain fog so intense that it feels physically painful, and the only thing I am capable of is distracting myself by watching TV. Anything more cognitive is too painful, and I actually need subtitles and pausing and rewinding to follow the story because my brain can't keep up with TV. If I'm lucky, I'll get a few hours in my day during which the brain fog lessens to the point that I can push myself to get something else done. If I get those few hours, will I shower or balance my checkbook? Will I draft this talk or will I go through my mail or try to read a book? And if there's an event scheduled, like a doctor appointment, that's generally my entire day right there. Unfortunately, a few times a year, I also experience long periods in which my IH suddenly worsens for several weeks. I don't even get those few hours of partial daily relief. And these episodes have been lengthening over the years since illness struck. This spring, I had one lasting 50 days. That's almost two months with not even one single minute of relief from debilitating brain fog suffering and no way to predict when or even if relief would come. The only thing I could do was try to live through it and not lose hope. Although brain fog is certainly the symptom that most reduces my quality of life, I also contend with other symptoms, such as severe muscle aches caused by mild exercise. If I take a 30 minute walk, my body feels like I've hiked 10 miles. Although this is not typical for all people with IH, there does seem to be a subset with this experience. Thankfully, Xyrem improves this symptom, at least somewhat, so it's the only medication I've remained on throughout these years. To you watching this video, I will seem normal, no matter how badly I may feel. IH is an invisible disease. You cannot see my suffering or detect it with a test. You can only believe me or choose not to believe me. Almost overnight, IH transformed me from a hardworking doctor with a full family and social life into a nearly homebound shadow of my former self. Brain chemistry is a powerful thing, and I live in hope that someday researchers will discover how that chemistry went wrong and find a way to restore me. The Hypersomnia Foundation's website at hypersomniafoundation.org contains extensive information and free resources for patients, clinicians, and researchers. Please explore the site and tell others about it. For someone living with IH or a related sleep disorder such as narcolepsy type two, discovering our community means gaining understanding realizing you're not alone, and finding hope for the future.